welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. For my review of Millennium Actress, the second film by Satoshi Kon. Now, Millennium Actress was actually Kon's first original film. His first film, Perfect Blue, was based on an existing story, actually an existing film concept, of an existing script that was uh, scrapped for live action and turned into, into anime. So this is his complete, first completely original story. The basic premise is that a couple of documentary filmmakers are going to uh, interview an aging actress about her many roles over the decades. And so we get to see this woman's acting roles and basically her past life as she is relating it to these filmmakers. But then the filmmakers actually appear in these past events. So she's walking down the street and walks past these two filmmakers with you know, their camera. And they're quite surprised to find themselves in her memories, basically. But this is used as a metaphor for how completely involved they are in her, uh, in her retelling of her memories. Very interesting visual, uh, visual way of doing things. And it works really well in animation. I mean, the animation in this is very clean and crisp, and it definitely has the budget it needs to get what, uh, to get across what it needs to. I mean. Any, anything made, this is made about a decade ago, anything during that period had a minimal budget at best, and this clearly had plenty of budget. I mean, the action sequences are well animated, have plenty of, of cells in there, and the non-action sequences have enough cells to really get across what it needs to. And there's some pretty subtle animated acting in this movie, which is, which is awesome. And it's one of the benefits of animation. You can actually manage a film like this where you have things happening that may not be real, but it doesn't look fake, because in animation, everything's happening on the same level. So this is a really good idea for animation. Shows how well Cohn knew how to use his medium. Now the overall direction and the sort of visual look and feel of this can be a little confusing at times because it is using this sort of overlapping imagery intentionally. It, there is a lot going on here and this film plots the course of this woman's life and shows the various themes that we've in and out of her life. I'm reminded of something George Lucas uh, has talked about with regards to how he likes using music as a metaphor for storytelling, where in a symphony, for example, the symphony will start with a theme and then drop that theme for another theme and then come back to the original theme, but then explore it in a different way and sort of change it in certain ways and come back to another theme, things like that. In pop music, you have verse, chorus, verse, chorus bouncing back between themes and repetition and but then further exploration of existing uh, musical elements and so forth and how that's very interesting in film and this movie is definitely a symphony the symphony of this woman's life and the different things that happened to her and how some things are chances that only came across once in her life others were there the whole time and sometimes she missed those chances sometimes she didn't and just exploring what that's like. And it's really rare to see a film that is about an individual person's entire life, from girlhood to old age. There's really very little I can compare this to. I really don't know how to say how successful it was. As far as I can tell, it was very successful. I mean, we see how her life changed and her life evolved and how she made some decisions about what she was going to do and what she needed to do and what she did or didn't do. One of the really neat elements of the film though is those documentary filmmakers. They come in to the experience as fans of her and her work, but they've never really met her in real life. So in going through this experience, they come to understand her, not just her roles and not just her public persona, but also her and her life. And that's just really a beautiful thing. As a result, while this can be visually kind of complex and thematically somewhat intricate, it's a simple story. It's a story of a person's life and the chances that came along and the choices that are made. And as a result, it's really a profound story. Um, that simplicity really comes across as interesting because this isn't about space warriors. This isn't about a guy who can punch through concrete. It's not about special people. It's about a woman who had a job and who did her best in that job and tried to deal with it as best she could. 
And what were the results of that? And as a result, it's very affecting. It, it's, it's wonderfully, it, it's, it's very easy to get into this movie because you're seeing someone who is very relatable. And it, it's, it's, it's one of the really interesting things is that it doesn't rely on special powers or special abilities or, or high drama and, you know, a war is starting, whatever. It's just, it's about an actress. And that's it. I hope you get a chance to see Millennium Actress at some point. It is certainly a, an interesting and poignant film. If you have and want to discuss it, or want to discuss anime and manga in general, please stop by otakunovideo.net, where I've got a forum and a chat room and all sorts of cool stuff where we could talk about all of this wonderful anime and manga that challenges us so, as Millennium Actress definitely does. So I hope you get a chance to see it, because it's definitely interesting and definitely deserves more discussion. So that's it for me from, for now, and until next time, take care.